In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, good people of God, and welcome. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. Today is Tuesday, the 27th of September, 2022. It is Tuesday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time, Church ESC. It is the memorial of St. Vincent de Paul, priest. I am Father Blessed Amba Njume. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who for the relief of the poor and the fashion of the clergy endowed the priest St. Vincent de Paul with apostolic virtues, grant, we pray, that our fire with that same spirit, we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Job, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, verses 11 to 17, and verses 20 to 23. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 88. The response to the psalm is, Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 to 56. I read from the gospel. When the days drew near for Jesus to be received up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But the people would not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to bid fire come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is do not force your opinion on others. Everyone must not like you. Do not force your opinion on others. Everyone must not like you. Beloved of the Lord, the key lesson to learn from today's gospel passage is not everyone will or must accept your opinion or like you, regardless of who or what you are. What then do you do in such a situation where people do not accept your opinion or do not accept you because of your person? Do you hate them back? Do you force your opinion down through their throats? Do you wage war against your haters or those who don't agree with you? Not at all. You cannot force people to accept your point of view. Neither should you hate them for not liking or accepting you. Be good and be nice. What is true is true and what is good is good. It may not be accepted or seen now, but it will definitely be seen or accepted later. Conversion is not by force, but by offering a green card of peace and friendship. The Gospel Pericopy we just listened to a while ago tells us that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem through Samaria and he sent messengers ahead of him to prepare 
and make ready for his visit. But the Samaritans would not let Jesus pass through their town. If Jesus liked for all they cared, he could reach Jerusalem through another route, even by flying, but definitely not through their town. Why did the Samaritans not want Jesus to go through their town to Jerusalem? Jerusalem was a Jewish city. Samaria as well, though Jewish, had mixed up with Gentile and unorthodox practices. Jews and Samaritans were enemies for political reasons. Passing through Samaria to Jerusalem was like passing through one's neighbor's sitting room to one's rest room, a neighbor with whom one is not in talking terms with. The Bible gives us two episodes to demonstrate this Jewish-Samaritan enmity. First, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, it was a Jew who had been ambushed by thieves. His brother's fellow Jews, who should have helped him, did not do so. It was a Samaritan, the one who supposedly we did not expect to help, who rather helped. That earned him the title Good Samaritan. Second, in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 1 to 25, the encounter between Jesus and the woman at the well. When he asked her for water, her reply was, You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. How come you ask me for a drink? John, chapter 4, verse 9. Meaning, their enmity was such that not even as much as a cup of water could one offer to the other. Now you understand why the Samaritans would not let Jesus, a Jew, pass through their town, heading for Jerusalem, another Jewish city, an enemy city. First question to ask, was going to Jerusalem through Samaria the only route? The answer is no. However, it was the shortest and most usual road. There was another possibility, a longer road, going to Jerusalem through Perea. The Pharisees often used this long road because they avoided coming in contact with the Samaritans, whom they considered as infidels. Now, the next question is, why did Jesus use this road? If other Jews, like the Pharisees, used the longer road, did Jesus have to use this road? The answer, of course, is yes. It was necessary. He would not keep enemies, even if the people considered him as one. He came for this to convert the people. He would not avoid them or shy away from them. There was a problem. He will confront them even if they did not welcome him. He has to win them over. Yet, he will not force his opinion on them. To win them over will not be by force. He could go by the long road, but he chose to go through their town to give them a green card of friendship. If they accept, fine. If they do not accept, he will not force them. Religion and conversion is not by force. You do not force people to convert. You do not force people to see as you see. So he even rebukes the apostles who want it by force. Should we call down fire to burn and consume them? No, Jesus answered. Let us move away to another village. You don't force God on people. You don't force your opinion on people. Make your point simple and clear. If accepted, fine. If not accepted, don't wage a war on those who do not accept your opinion. How do we apply to this gospel passage to our lives? If we are sincere, good people of God, 
we would agree that often we try to dodge away from meeting people with whom we have differences. We do not want to come in contact with them, like the Samaritans did not want to come in contact with the Jews, and like the Pharisees, Jews, who preferred to go through the long road than come in contact with the Samaritans because they had differences. We prefer to take a long road than confront those with whom we have differences. Sometimes, when we move along the road and we see them, we change our route. Then how do you win them over? How do we solve the problem? Day your day, make I day my day. Stay at your lane and let me stay at my lane. That does not solve the problem. Jesus moves through the Samaritan town because he wants to solve the problem. He will come in contact with them. He came to save and to seek that which was lost. And even when we decide to meet those with whom we have differences, they must see things as we see them. We force them to accept our point of view. They either take it or we call down fire on them. We do not even think they have an opinion that we too can look at. We do not think they have a point of view. No, it must be as we want it. Many times, we force our opinions on others, be it in church groups, be it in family problems, be it between or among friends. We wage a war on those who refuse to see things as we do. We hate them and we declare them enemies. If they will not accept us or our opinions, we hate them, make them enemies, refuse to talk to them. Good people of God, we should convince people to action and not force them to submission. This is exactly what Jesus does. He wants to win over the people, but not by force. Let us learn not to force down our opinions through the throats of others. Make your point simple and clear. If they accept, fine. If they do not, do not make them enemies. People must not see things the way you do and you must not force them to accept your opinion. And finally, it is good to confront those with whom we have problems. Avoiding them, deciding not to talk with them, not to come in contact with them does not solve the problem. For this reason, Jesus hates for Jerusalem through the Samaritan town, though he knows they are enemies because he wants to confront them to solve the problem, not by force, but by offering a green card of peace and friendship. Let us pray that we may emulate this example of Jesus to solve our own problems. Confront, not to force your opinion, but to make the others see your point of view. And even if they do not accept, they do not become your enemies because they refuse to see things the way you see them. St. Vincent de Paul was born in France in the year 1581 and lived his priestly life at the service of the poor and the formation of the clergy. He founded the Vincentians for the purpose of the spiritual formation of the clergy and to assist the poor. He also founded the Congregation of the Daughters of Charity. He was called the Saint of Charity on account of his passion and dedication to the poor, whom he served wholeheartedly. He died in Paris, in France, in the year 1660. We wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Vincent de Paul and to all associations and institutions that have him as patron. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.